Good morning guys and welcome back to another video here and as you can see you're talking to Winter Mac and in today's video guys we've got the usual British lad right behind me. Good morning guys from a very very chilly Pakistan. We're calling him Winter Jagard. <laughs> and yeah guys we are awake and ready to explore this place. As you can see here I promised in the last video I would show you what our beautiful hotel looks like when you wake up in the morning. As you can see here we have full glass room views all the way around we have snow-capped mountains we have the village here or the city of hunza right in front of us and a lot of places out here to explore so as you can imagine here this place is beautiful now in the winter but imagine this in the spring or in the summertime these windows pop right open so you can wake up hear the birds chirping have a nice spring summertime breeze so there's a reason why people say the best time to visit hunza is in the summer because you just get like more greenery here obviously things are starting to uh, die out and the close proximity here because it's winter time right that said it's still a really beautiful time to be up here and i can't wait to show you guys this area and inshallah we'll come back for another visit at some point when it's a warmer time too to share with you guys but let's head on down we're gonna get some breakfast here at the hotel and get on with the day all right guys you can get a little hotel tour now during the day of course it's going to be a bit more well lit so you can see things better and we are heading on down here to get some chow yeah good morning gentlemen good morning we're a little later than expected but better late than never right good morning, good morning. oh never been better and you oh we got the uh options up here yeah definitely a uh, coffee will do the trick along with you say paratha yeah is there cheese paratha you know if there's cheese broth, I'll do that. Otherwise, uh, what are you getting for breakfast? Omelet and paratha Chinese. Uh, yeah. pra oh, all right. Actually, yeah, I'll do that. Omelet and paratha. Oh, yeah, because we can make, if you guys didn't see it in the last one, we made the Mac special, I'm calling it. Paratha bread with an omelet inside, rolled up like a burrito. You take a big bite of that thing, you get a mix of many different flavors. You get the Pakistani culture, you get the American culture, and then you get it infused together for the ultimate combo. You might even need to try it that way. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I love the same as you, please. Yeah. Can I come back? Yeah, please. Yeah, sweet. Oh, oh yeah, we've got some fresh food cooking. Salam alaikum, yar. As you guys can see, we've got some fresh burners going and we have some delicious stuff. Omelets are coming right up. Mm -mm -mm. Freshly made here. Shukriya, my friend. That's gonna be delicious. Mm -mm -mm. Fresh omelets ready to be chowed on with the paratha bread. So we're doing the uh, specialty here. It's called the uh, omelet paratha sandwich. We're gonna roll it up a little different today though. We're gonna toss this thing right inside there. Toss this on top. We're gonna roll it up kind of like a churro taco type mix. We're gonna take a bite just like that. You ever seen one of these eaten like this? I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looks good though. Mm -hmm. Now that is G triple O D. Good. good, good. Nothing like that paratha bread. It sure does go well. Mm -hmm. Especially, guys, because it's cold up here in Hunza right now. So having anything warm right now just warms up your entire body. Very delicious. Guys, I just chowed that thing down like there's no tomorrow. And now we're going to wash it down with a delicious fresh cup of mango juice here. Mango, bro. Is it? Mm -hmm. Mango is actually one of my favorite fruits of all time. Mm. What a great combo. So we've got a new addition to the group here. We've got Mr. Posh number two. You know, they've got eight other siblings. The nine of you total, yeah? Yes. Nine, five brothers and four sisters? Three, Three sisters. sisters. Uh, so there's eight of you. Yes. Uh, big family. Big family. <laughs> this is Multani Halwa, sir. It's our tradition of Pakistani Halwa. Oh, Pakistani Halwa. Let's uh, dig right in here then. So you just take a bite right out of this thing. Is it like a dessert or something? Yeah, it's sweet. Mmm, quite a nice flavor. So it's got some caramel in there, I'm guessing? Mix, mix, of course. Very tasty. Perfect right after the omelet, too. And, actually, perfect with a sip of coffee, too. I'm gonna try this. Mm -hmm. So guys, the uh, jacket I got uh, down in Lahore, we're gonna have to do a little repair to it. Shukriya, my friend. Delicious breakfast. Very tea gay. Very tea gay. So guys, we're on a mission to do a little jacket repair. We've got Harry's zipper never actually worked since purchase, and my sleeve actually has zippers on it. So we're gonna see if we can just get it sewed up. Good to go. Shukriya, my friend. See you later, yes? Thank you. Shukriya. Allah hafiz. Allah hafiz. Oh, there's the ducks. So you're the ones making all the noise this morning. Uh-huh. The little pet ducks. Abkanam Keahe. Yeah, you're getting bit, bro. This guy's definitely getting rabies before we leave. 
Good morning, Hunza Valley. Thank you for everything. Bye. We'll see you next time we're in Hunza, yeah? Yeah, we'll see you at Upper Hunza. That will be there. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, we'll meet. Look okay. forward to it. Thank Have you fun. so much for everything. Goodbye. 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 Beautiful views out here, mate. Quite impressive, I'll tell you that. Where are you from now? Australia. Australia, mate. As you guys can see, so many cool little options to eat with these incredible views up top. That's why I say, like, this place during the summer would be incredible. Salam alaikum. So we're cruising through here. Salam. Got the whole squad coming through. Salam. Quite the police escort today. Salam alaikum. We'll come back and do it later, guys. They're so close. Oh my gosh, look at this view right here. It doesn't even seem real. I feel like this is a green screen. It's a lady finger mountain. Wow, massive. So guys, here's our hotel from outside. Very beautiful design to it. It's called the Himalayan Tiger Hotel and it offers these picturesque views. So where's first stop today, gentlemen? We are going Baltic Fort. Baltic Fort? All right, let's do it. All right, we're en route to our first destination. And uh, how far is it? Five minutes to get up. Oh, we're going through some tight little streets here. Oh, there's the sign for Baltit Fort. Quite the uh, steep roads to climb up here. You guys, I will say, mountain towns are some of my favorite to visit. There's just something about like the quaint feeling of it. You just feel at home. Stopping by the local high school. All right, guys, and there's the fort up top. So we're gonna take a little hike up, which will actually be quite nice. It's gonna warm us up, get the uh, blood flowing, and we'll show you up there. This is what the uh, boys model high school looks like. Here we go. Oh, we've got a little sun coming out too. You can see the sun peeking through the clouds there. It's really starting to light up the mountains. Abkesa, hey. Tige. Tige? Perfect. <laughs> so here it is, guys. It seems like in the winter, you've got an extra one hour of time every single day from the 1st to the 30th in summer. And then now in the winter months, which we're in right now, we're at 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. So I'm guessing the crowds will be a little smaller today since it's cold and that'll be nice. We'll have more areas to explore. Oh, ticket office right here. How much is it to get in? Let me ask. It's different. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, sir? Uh, wonderful. And you? Nice Tige. Nice to see you in Hunza and especially Baltic Ford. Shukriya, nice my friend. You, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Do. Do for now, it's 2400, sir. 2400? All right. One second. All right, here we go, guys. We've got our entry ticket to the Baltit Fort in Hunza. Yep. Oh, yeah. Thank you, guys. This is 800 years. Shukriya, my good friend. Nice to see you. Uh, nice dollars. to see you. All right, got the change here. So twelve hundred to get in is roughly seven, eight dollars roughly for us to get into the fort, and we got a nice little hike on the way up, guys. And at first glance, you think it's just a ticket. You flip it over, take the side off that's the ticket, and you got yourself a postcard. Kill two birds with one stone right there. Definitely gonna get our workout in, gaining some serious altitude. The way this place is laid out, it's quite interesting. Near all of the uh, pathways, you got running water coming through. And you got. Just a lot of stuff to look at on your way up. Bridge across here, which is pretty sweet. Absolutely picturesque views on the way up. Oh, oh, fresh juices and shakes on your way up too, guys. We're in heaven. Love these style jeeps right here. This is Mr. Posh's future car, yeah? Yes. Yeah, that's a nice one. As they say, you can go fast, but Jay can go anywhere. <laughs> oh, there's a pop out there. Oh, good boy, down boy. Oh, wow, guys. Beautiful, beautiful walk to the top. Now you can really see everything in the distance here. The riverway out there in the distance. And, whew, out of breath here. You've got the local village houses over here. I mean, imagine waking up in one of those places and looking out into this every day. You feel like you're in a postcard. And there's the 800 year old fort. All right, heading up to find more photo spots here guys but pretty much in every direction you look it's a picturesque view that's perfect for photos so we're getting to the top of here and it's pretty cool how Hunza is literally just surrounded in every way you look with mountains got the uh zilza boos this thing used to have some strong firing power shooting way out into the mountains and over here oh yeah a look into nature right over there. And are these built like this basically for farmlands? Yes, yes, sir. And what type of uh, trees are those? Apple? Apple and apricots. Oh, apple and apricot trees. So guys, that's why it's good to even come here in the, what, spring, summertime's harvesting? Yeah. After, uh, 
<laughs> so after April here, guys, this place has those fresh fruits ready for you to just chow down on while looking into these views. Could stare into them for days. And if you listen really closely, you can actually hear the sound of the waterfalls in the distance. Ooh, hopefully you guys can hear that. Very, very soothing sound. This is definitely now number one most beautiful place that I've seen in Pakistan. Would you yeah. agree? Yeah, I agree. Totally, 100%. Yeah, 200%. And as you can see, guys, the sun is peeking out even more than when I showed you just a few minutes ago. Got more of the clouds basically releasing some of that sunlight. So we're actually able to see even further. That How far is that uh, that mountain way, way out there? The snow-capped one, like 100 kilometers? Yes, yes. Wow. That's how clear it is up here, guys. And just put that into perspective. Like when we were down in Karachi and Lahore, Sometimes we couldn't even see from here to where the cell phone tower is right there. So when you're taking a deep breath in here, oh, you can just feel that brisk, fresh air. And you can smell a little bit of the campfires, the morning smells of breakfast. Oh, it's just a mix of happiness. Collector, up case of hay. Shukriya. Got a postcard now. Thank you. Thank you. And we are heading up into the fort. All right, guys, and we're heading in. Here we go. Watch your head, it's a low entrance. And when you first walk in, oh yeah, the very old wood leading up. Oh yeah, some steep steps to get that workout in. Ah, salam alaikum. And we have entered. The door is very small. Oh yeah. Were people shorter then or they just made them smaller? <laughs> no, this is like the old doors. So people like 800 years ago were shorter? Not shorter. They just like smaller? Yeah. Okay, so we're going in guys, as you can see, even me as a five foot 11 guy, you can barely squeeze through. We've got multiple levels. It seems like it's a mix of the 800 year old and now the modern day here, because the metal looks newer. Yeah. yeah. It's a little modify to preserve. To preserve it, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. You can read the details, there's mention. Oh, this is the old dungeon. So they kept prisoners down here? Yes. Yes, wow. So imagine that guys, you're trapped down there and this is your home. And it's crazy because you're so close to these picturesque views, except you're trapped inside of this dungeon. And now we're going through here, this passageway. Sorry, it's a little dark for you guys to be able to see in here. But uh, as you can see, we're walking directly over some of the remains of it down there. And as we get a little closer into here, we are now in the room with the fresh apparel. The personal robe of Raja Sifat. This is the local dress. This is the female one. Uh, so, all right, so that's male, male and that's female. We might have to buy one later. Yeah, we can. Another little passageway through here, guys. And now we're in the, is this the living room, the lounge spot? Yeah, the royal house. Royal house. Oh, this is where they serve the tea. And look at these units, these devices they used to serve the tea in. Imagine Mr. Posh pouring the tea from that yes. with his strong cord. <laughs> uh-huh. Very expert, no? Yeah, absolute expert. All right, and we're back into the main corridor. Oh, there's more, there's more too. Oh, and the British lad already has a couple battle scars. All right, and we're heading up to the terrace level. And up here, oh, wow. Imagine this, you just come out here every morning and enjoy a cup of tea while looking into this place, the royal throne. Yeah. The nice part is, guys, since we are here in the winter, as I was thinking it would be the case, there's not as many people here, so it feels like we've got the place to ourselves. Yeah, this terrace is just mind-blowing. Like, just, you walk up here and you have the full 360-degree views of every mountain peak in the area, which is just quite phenomenal. Let's put it this way. If I lived in Pakistan 800 years ago, I'd see if I could rent this place. At least a little weekend getaway. What, what do you think, Harry? 800 years ago, you'd probably rent this place out for a weekend getaway? Airbnb. Uh-huh. Probably available. Yeah, definitely. Probably fully booked. Yeah, fully booked. Uh-huh. So guys, this is how, this is my old days. Before I used to do these raw vlogs, a lot more cinematic, slow-mo, and Harry's still doing some of them. So I need to be the model today. It's like the old days, like me one year ago. Professionals. Mm -hmm. These guys are professional. <laughs> Oh, we got, a, we got a new vlogger right I'll put here. that down for you. Guys, I used to carry around a big camera like this with a microphone up top and the tripod, and I used to film like that. Now it's just on the GoPro. Guys, it brought me back into my old days. We got a little secret skills behind the scenes. All right, we're beginning the tour, and one more time, your name? Isa Karim. Isa Karim. Nice to meet you, my friend. He's going to be our tour guide, taking us through the other rooms we haven't been in yet. From the, we start from the reception. From the reception, perfect. So before our visit, 
I would like to give you a brief account about the historical background of this fort first. Well, in Hunza we have two forts. One is called Altit and this is called Baltit Fort. So in ancient time, more than eight independent states were existing in northern part of Pakistan. Now it's called Gilgit Baltistan. So this room used to be as a lobby, as a reception room to receive the guest. Mm -hmm. It's also called tax collecting place. In ancient time, the people of Hunza, they paid tax for the king because there was no money, no currency. From craft, they pay tax, and those tax they store here. So here I'm going to share one of the great. A little secret passageway down there. No. Uh huh. So they could really fill that up with a lot of uh, old pieces of. Um, would they give them like nicely made uh, welded pieces of like pottery and things like that? Yeah. And then they would fill them up down there. Yeah. At that time, there was no currency. From craft, they pay tax, and those grain they store here. Uh, okay. Three meters deep, six by six square feet. Oof. It's only access from here. Somebody go down there by help the rope or using the ladder. I mean, only the skinny person he can eat. Wow. You know, guys, I'd have to have a lot less chicken biryanis to be able to fit through this hole. <laughs> That's for sure. So after building the Karakorum Highway, then the rice is introduced in Hunza. But before that, there was no rice. Uh, no rice before <laughs> that. Wow. So back then they didn't have chicken biryanis no. then. Oh, they all right. The chicken. They had the chicken, yeah. But yeah. Not biryanis. Oh, all right, all right. No wonder why the, uh, the skinny guys could fit through there. And these are the wooden scales. It's a measuring ports, like a half kg, five kg, ten kg, like this. That's what these right here. Yeah. Oh, wow. And the black pot is made from stone. It's the ancient pressure cooker. That's oh. the cooking pot. Oh, okay. Because there was no metal in Hunza, they cooked in a stone pot like this. It takes a long time to cook. Once yeah. when we cook, the heat can stay longer. Oh, right, because it's the stone, yeah. People keep horses for transportation and for pollinology. This is the saddle for horse. And that's the ancient weapon in terms of bow and arrow. Uh, so this is where they would hunt the uh, rams with the bow and arrows? Yeah. So please watch your head. The doors are very low inside everywhere. Be careful. We go Perfect. This way. All right. Guys, a little more information on here. As you can see, there's quite a bit of light right now, but our uh, guide here is telling us that back then, there was no light in here. So it just blows my mind actually, because I didn't even think about it before, but the prisoners were right under the royal family. So I was just telling them, I was like, it's the old wise man saying, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. All right, let's continue through here. Yeah guys, so a little bit more about this uh, room we're in. It was actually the uh, king's room. So a bit of a family room. Basically in here they would do everything from cooking, they would sleep in here, and actually right in the center there used to be a fire in here with a chimney up there, no longer in here anymore, but um, they would have everything happen in this one specific room and obviously heating and cooking, that's why you have the fireplace right in the middle. And uh, the crazy part is they would have like 10 or 15 people sleep just in here inside the king's palace. And so our guide told us that that's how Hunza, traditional Hunza houses are still designed, except now they have more bedrooms as well as uh, guest rooms. Back into the old reception. And so in here, guys, this is the royal kitchen. So it's a second kitchen, basically. This kitchen is for the whole family, the guards, the servants, and where everything happens. So looking in here, you have the butter churner you have here, these units where you basically crush the uh, spices, the flour, that's like a skin bag. And uh, over there you have like a uh, animal skin for the fire. And then these are like old artifacts of what they would cook in. And so they would cook in, um, I believe more of like a clay or a stone pot, which would keep the pots hot longer, but they would take much longer to heat up because the cement would be able to hold it in better. So very, very interesting to look at it. Nice, very nice design from being, you know, 800 years old. You guys down here? Nope. Lost the group, guys. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Upstairs. Uh, upstairs. Ah, uh, you guys are back up here. Thought I lost them. Place is a uh, mansion. Couldn't figure out where to go. So this is the place where King of Funza holding his court in the summertime. The summer court area. So that's the throne for the king. The king used to sit there. And his notables and courtiers sitting around here. So in the winter time, the king used to sit here for the sunny day, like this. Wow. And that's the bodyguard room is connected from here to down in the prison. And they'd have the bone arrows ready, mm -hmm. just in case. From sea level, we are here 2,500 meters high, 8,000 feet. And this is the Krakum range. If weather is clear, we can see seven highest mountains from the roof of the Baltic Fort. Wow. In this direction, Rakaposhi. This is in Nagar Valley, but you can see the nice view from here. In the middle, Diran and Sumayar Peak, two peaks here. Behind the 
uh, dry mountain golden peak or span peak and this direction that's the fresh snow up there ultar one ultar two and behind the mountain lady finger and hunza peak wow. so on these mountains to see sunrise and sunset most of the people go up there that's the highest viewpoint eagle nest eagle nest that's the highest yeah. uh, right up top there and that's the another fort altit altit oh yeah yeah Eagle Nest is called Eagle Nest because there's eagles up there? There's the shapes of the stone. Uh -huh. It's like the eagle, elephant, and other animals like this. You can oh, very the beautiful. Shapes. The new residence of the King family now, they're living there. Can you see the red and white mobile tower? Yeah. That's one, two, three, four. Behind mm. the four tower, can you see white windows on the roof? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. the residence of King family. Oh, and wow. this brown building, this belongs to the royal family, Darbar Hotel. Oh, wow. So, and that's the nicest hotel in Hansa? Mm. Heading into the next room here. So guys, we're entering into what used to be the guest room. I would definitely love to stay in this as a guest room because you could just walk right out under the terrace where we were just at. Now they've turned it into a room basically with all the history of the kings in here. So guys, in here you can see the progression of leaders of this area. And you'd call them kings? kings all of them, yes. kings, yeah. yes. Princes. Princes, kings, and we have Mir, Gazanfar, who's still alive, but he's 75, yeah? And then now we have Prince Shah, who is now in charge, yeah? Yeah. As king. So now King Shah Salim Khan. How many years ago was this photo? This is the wedding uh, picture, I think, almost uh, 45 or 50. Okay, so he's much older now. Yeah. Uh, he has kids? Yeah, he has. He has kids, yeah. Oh, this is nice. So here, guys, is the uh, summer bedroom. I can see why it's called the summer bedroom. Imagine you uh, hop out of bed. Well, actually, not bed. They all slept on the floors. And actually, still, our guide was telling us that 80% of people in Hunza, mostly the older population, are still sleeping on the floor. And only about 20% of the population, being the younger generation, are sleeping in beds. But yeah, imagine hopping up off the floor and walking out and looking out to this view. Hello, Hunza, is what I'd be saying every morning. Ooh, the stained glass room. So quite a nice summer balcony here. As you can see here, we've got the uh, British influence here with the stained glass. And this is where the ladies would watch the polo matches from right over here. You see Harry looking back to his... Uh, Hello. Hello, Hunza. His British roots are coming out. And you can see in the distance here. Would be a great spot to watch the game. I'd say so. All right, heading into the next room here. It's again family room for winters. Family room for winters, open yeah. Open fireplace in the middle. Mm. Seating, dining, sleeping, all in one. Oh, okay. The so winter bedroom. Winter time, you don't need to go out. Cooking, seating, talking, yeah. sleeping, all in one. So everyone just stays inside. That's the baby god for babies to be used for children. And two dry fruit store to keep dry apples, apricots, and two holy Korans buying hair to the locals. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Everything is available in one. All in oh, one. wow. So you really could stay in this room for days. Yeah. Oh, or, oh, watch your step there. Didn't see that. <laughs> this is an interior assembly hall. In case of bed weather, the king opens the holy, he's got in this room. Oh, and okay. Some living room as well. The musical instruments still on the wedding occasion. Another first, we use same musical instruments. And China is the first country to introduce the paper money, the Chinese currency in Australia. Mm. Oh, so Chinese currency was the first currency used in this region? Water system at that time, but they used this currency at that time. Oh, okay. And how long does like a transition from bartering to currency take? Is that like one day the king just says, hey, we're going to start using this currency? Or it was like over time you could trade in certain things that in exchange get currency? So they had uh, agreements with uh, China. So then when they start the currency, then the people, they say, okay. Oh, start, like, and then immediately, yeah. immediate change. Well, wow. imagine that guys, one day you're used to a bartering system for generations. And then the next day you're introduced to currency. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't want to touch it because as the old saying goes, you break it, you buy it. And I don't think I can afford breaking it. And once again, uh, another view, but a more wide open view here. So imagine both of these open. You just have a postcard you're looking out into. That's how beautiful this is. And of course, probably a thousand years ago, there's much less development. So think about how much more nature you'd see just in the short distance right here. Thanks for your time. Shukriya. So now we're going through this one. Perfect, thank you. Uh -huh. 
And this staircase is original? No, so after the restoration they make this exit and this stone benching. Okay. Before there was only the mud. Oh, okay, just the mud, yeah. Very enjoyable tour, gentlemen. How many times have you guys been on this tour? Many times. Many times. So that means I can ask you any question about it yeah. and you'll be able to answer, yeah? What's the word for king? Gotcha. Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Got you there. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> yep, yep. No, there's uh we were being told last night by some of the locals here. And so the owner was telling us last night that they're in this area you have to be able to speak, was it seven or eight languages? Seven. Yeah. Seven or eight dial or seven dialects here in order to be able to communicate in all of the surrounding villages and cities here. So just imagine that. Then we have four different version of Brushiski. Say how are you in all seven? All seven? Yeah. And we'll test them here. Just <laughs> only. <laughs> Alright. Behal Bila. Jake Halan. This is the... Okay, three of them. Three. Three. Alright, yeah. The third one... Like, they have same like the accent is different, you know? Yeah, yeah. But everyone can commonly speak in this area English and Urdu, Urdu yeah? So that's the nice part and also we we're told that like a lot of the shop owners here will speak Japanese, Chinese, French. So yeah, also it, Chinese mostly. A lot of Chinese, yeah. So it's a very international area. Very fascinating obviously with a lot of tourism in Pakistan's most beautiful place. So yeah guys, that's the end of this uh, first video exploring Huns. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Let me tell you this, we've got a lot more videos coming. So make sure that subscribe button below so you don't miss out on any of those videos or any other videos around the world. And if you've enjoyed this one guys, hit that thumbs up and I'll see you in tomorrow's video.